This is the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20 and it reads it says for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior the Lord Yahweh Shah HaMashiach verse 21 who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself all right Shalom I want to give all praise honor and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone who taught me this truth double salutations to all you Akim out there laboring the house of David the elect that's pushing his word with all truth righteousness and sincerity Shalom to you brothers Shalom to the elect I'm back at you with another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit of the Rakak Wadash. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is going to change us in due time. Okay, let's get that real quick. All right, 1 John 3. And we'll start at the top. All right, this is 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. And it reads, it says, Behold, what manner of, of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, the elect, that we should not be called, so like it, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. The point, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, all right? It hasn't appeared yet, but it will be, okay? The change is coming. And it doeth not yet appear what is what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, and who is he? Yahweh Shai. When he shall appear, we shall be like him. See that? We're going to be changed. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. You see that? So the point okay this is the victory right here okay the scriptures say we're going to put off corruption and put on incorruption immortality all right we're going to put off this mortal and sinful flesh and put on perfection under that second covenant you see to become those incorruptible saints right this is the definition of incorruptible it says that cannot corrupt or decay, not admitting of corruption. So these these uh, 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 immortal bodies are going to never be corrupted. They're never going to decay. OK, sin will no longer e exist in these new bodies. All right. It says thus glow, thus gold, glass, mercury and see are incorruptible spirits are supposed to be incorruptible it says our bodies the point here our bodies shall be changed into incorruptible and immortal substances okay these are the promises that have been bestowed upon the lord's elect all right our bodies shall be changed into incorruptible and immortal substances it says that cannot be bribed inflexibly just and upright okay because we're going to be completely upright when the law statute commandments are put in us you know are put in our inward parts right this is uh the book of second ezra chapter 2 and verse 10 and it reads it says thus saith the lord yahweh shai unto ezra tell my people that i will give them the kingdom of jerusalem which i would have given unto israel the point second Ezra chapter 2 verse 11 it says their glory also will I take unto me <clears throat> and give these everlasting and give these the everlasting tabernacles which I have prepared for them you see that the everlasting tabernacles which are what those bodies those new perfected bodies all right putting off corruption and putting on incorruption man Okay, imagine that, man. 
you know, this is what we meditate upon, man. You know, as the scripture we read in uh, Philippians chapter three, you know, our conversation is in heaven. You know, the Lord told us to store up tre uh, uh, treasures in heaven, which can't have, which can't be uh, 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 stolen, which can't be corrupted, man. You know, the, the, the thoughts of immortality, living forever, being sinless, man. Okay, ultimately being like Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and the angels. This is what we're getting ready to come back into. All right. This is First Peter. Okay. This is First Peter. In uh, verse two, First Peter chapter one, verse two, and it reads: "It says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctification of the Spirit." Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. <clears throat> Verse 3. 1 Peter 1 and 3 it says, Blessed be the power and father of our Lord Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach from the dead. You see, we've been gotten. He, the Lord has begotten us again, all right, through the Rakakwadash, through the Holy Spirit. You know, He's uh, uh, He's made us alive again. You know, the point, First Peter one and four says, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. And what is that? Those new bodies, as the Lord said, those everlasting tabernacles. Which I have prepared for them Alright, think about that man We have new heavenly bodies in the heavens You know, that are waiting for us to inhabit them To, uh, to inhabit them Okay, to put on that incorruption Because we're coming we're, we're coming to that point where we're going to be changed Right, let's read this in the uh, <clears throat> In the NLT 1 Peter 1 and 4 To an inheritance incorruptible undefiled That fadeth not away that won't decay, that can't get uh, uh, corrupted, reserved in heaven for you. That's a win, man. Okay, this is a uh, same verse NLT. It says, and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. Come on, man. All right, those bodies. You know. Like the scriptures say, you know, uh, uh, I have not seen, ear have not heard, which the Lord has in store for them that love him. Roughly paraphrasing, man. All right. We can't even put it in words what the Lord has in store for his beloved, the elect. You know, going back, first Peter one and four says, reading this again, first Peter one and four says to an inheritance un incorruptible. And undefiled that faded not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of Yahweh Shai through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time and see we're being reserved we're being kept through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. all right let me get that word for um for kept Salakia. all right that word all right we're kept Okay. That word for kept it says to guard protected to it says to guard protect by a military guard either to prevent hostile invasion or to keep the inhabitants of a besieged city from flight. Metaphorically, it says under the control of the mosaic the mosaic law that he might not escape from his power, to protect by guarding to keep, by watching and guarding to preserve one. From the attainment of something, man. So the Lord is, is keeping us, man. You know, Lord willing, you know, we're part of the elect. As the scriptures say, you know, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, man. So we're being kept. The Lord is reserving us, man. And Lord willing, we make it through the uh, the hour of temptation, Jacob's trouble. You know, we endure to the end. Okay. Who are kept by the power of God through faith. Unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You see? First Peter 1 and 6, it says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, 
though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, right? The hell, the affliction that we're going through right now. All right. But we endure this hell and affliction, you know, to make it to the other side. All right. To ultimately, like we say, not to be judged. We go through this shit right now, this hell right now, in order to not to uh, uh, to catch the real hell in the end, which is going to be that destruction. You know, because after the destruction is when is when we're going to live again. OK, the destruction has to come for, come first in order for us to uh, uh, to live, you know, uh, immortality, you know, to be immortal. It says that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be trial with fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, whom having not seen ye love, and whom though now you see him not yet believing. You see that? Even though we haven't seen Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right, we believe everything that he says, right? Yet rejoice, ye, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, all right? And part of that salvation is also what? Being upgraded and changed. Okay? Salvation, immortality, being changed is all in the same breath. All right? Let's get this too. Okay, this is... <clears throat> we'll start up a little bit. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 6. Okay? This is second Ezra chapter six, and I'll start at um we'll start at eighteen and read down. Second Ezra chapter six verse eighteen and, and, it, and it reads it says, And it said, Behold, the days come that I will be that I will begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth. Yahweh by Shema Yahweh Shalakia. Yahweh Second <clears throat> Ezra chapter 6 verse 18 and it says and it said behold the days come that I would begin to draw nigh and to visit them that dwell upon the earth Yahweh Shai is coming to visit the world which he made verse 19 it says it will begin to make inquisition of them what they be that have hurt unjustly with their unrighteousness and when the affliction of Zion shall be fulfilled and we're in that time all right the Lord said that uh you know the Lord said that our welfare was accomplished according to um Isaiah the 40th chapter and now we're in the time of that salvation verse 20 says and when the world that shall begin to vanish away shall be finished then will I show these tokens, these signs. The book shall be open before the firmament, and they shall see all together. All right, going into what the prophecies, the Lord using the um, the unicorn, the World Wide Web, all right, to push forward this uh, this this gospel. Okay, this is how the elect, you know, were waking up, you know, by the way of the unicorn and internet. You know, they shall see all together, right? It says, and the children of a year old shall speak with their voices. The women with child shall bring forth untimely children of three or four months old, and they shall live and be raised up. And suddenly shall the, the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty, going into the famine and food shortages, the time of trouble. It says, and the trumpet shall give a sound, which every man heareth. They shall be suddenly afraid. All right. And the prophets are given the, the uh given the sound given the warnings all right it says at that time shall friends fight one another one against another like enemies and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein the springs of the fountains shall stand still and, and in three hours they shall not run whosoever remaineth from all these that i have told thee shall escape and see my salvation 
and the end of your world. You see that? The point. It says, And the men that are received shall see it, who have not tasted death from their birth. All right? So everybody's not going to die. Okay? It says, And the hearts and the heart of the inhabitants shall be changed and turned into another meaning. You see that? Because we're going to be upgraded, man. Okay? We're going to put on, you know, incorruption, man. Immortality. Okay, the Lord said that there would be some standing here that shall not taste of death. Let's get that too. All right, this is Matthew 16 in verse 27, and it reads, it says, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. You see? Yahweh Shai is coming with the reward. All right, verse 28 Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You see that? And Lord's will, man. We be one of the, the ones that don't taste of death, man. And we see Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai coming, you know, in the, in the, in the, with his glory. You know? And we be taken and we be changed, you know? Because that's what's coming. The destruction, all right? As I said, the destruction has to come first. In order for the change to come, let's make that point too. Right? Let's go to um let's go to second Ezra's, right? You know, just speaking about being changed and being turned into those incorruptible saints. Alright, let's go to second Ezra's. Right, let's go to second Ezra's chapter four. Okay. We're going to get straight to the point. Okay, this is 2nd Ezra chapter 4. And we'll start at verse 20. Um, let's start at 23. Or 22. 2nd Ezra 4 and 22. It says, Then answer I, and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, let me have understanding. For it, for it was not in my mind... For it was not my mind to be curious of the high things, but of such as pass by us daily, namely, wherefore Israel is given up as a reproach to the heathen. And for what cause the people whom thou hast loved is given over unto ungodly nations. And why the law of our forefathers is brought to naught, and the written covenants come to none effect. And we pass out of the world as grasshoppers, and our life is an astonishment and fear, and we are not worthy to obtain mercy. What what will he then do unto his name whereby we are called of things have I asked? Then then answered he me and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel, for the world hasteth fast to pass away. Alright, this current world is hastening fast to pass away. Alright, to bring in the point, here we go. Verse 27 it says, and cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time in time to come for the world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities right wickedness sin transgression okay but as concerning the things whereof thou askest asking me i will tell thee for the evil of the psalm but the destruction thereof is not yet come if therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down right which is basically america babylon if this place is not rooted out turned upside down and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away then cannot it come that is sown with good so the kingdom of heaven can't be established until what america is destroyed to this current power structure is, is removed all right then the good can be sown in the earth you see that so going back to my point all right, the destruction would have to come for come first in order for us to receive of that immortality. All right, this is Second Ezra chapter seven and verse forty-three, and it reads, Second Ezra chapter seven verse forty-three. It says, "But the day of doom shall be the end of this time." See that? But the day of doom shall be at the end of this time. And the beginning of immortality 
for to come where we're in corruption is past you see that so the day of doom is going to be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for it to come when corruption is past you see that so that's when we're going to live again like it tells you that in uh let me get that in second Ezra 14 because it talks about how after death you know is when we're going to live again right i was just thinking about that that's like second Ezra 14 and verse 35 right here we go this is second Ezra chapter 14 verse 34 and it reads it says therefore if so therefore if so if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts ye shall be kept alive and after death ye shall obtain mercy you see verse 35 it says for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again you see that because we're going to live again the kingdom of heaven all right we're going to be perfected we're going to be immortal you know it says when we shall live again and then the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared exactly man you know the righteous is going to be established and, and the ungodly the wicked they're going to be known they're going to be declared you know the point but going back right second Ezra 7 and 43 but the day of doom shall be the end of this time and the beginning of immortality for to come wherein corruption is past intemperance is at an end infidelity is cut off righteousness is grown and truth is sprung up then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed so there's no saving esau man this is the end of his his, his uh his power his reign of terror over the earth then shall no man be able to save him that is destroyed nor oppress him that have gotten the victory so there's no stopping the victory of the lord's elect all right it is written and set in stone that the elect of yahweh shimei awashai are going to win man they're going to have the victory you know that's the time we coming into man all right yahweh shimei awashai is going to change us you know we're going to we're going to achieve immortality we're going to live forever man you know so i mean i pray that this lesson was edifying man i'm going to give all praise honor and glory to yahweh bahasham yahweh shai bahasham rakakwadash and double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone and double salutation to all you i came out there laboring yay shalom we about to win shalom <laughs>